recording. Just a second. I spare, I'm back. I'm back with bananas and shrimps. I love bananas and shrimps. Mm. Look at that. Bananas and shrimps. A question that was on Facebook. Could you go into a kingdom hall and try to get reinstated so that you could infiltrate? Do you think you could do it? Um, I mean, it'd be good to uh, see a video someone actually talked about this who actually knew what they were talking about because I mean to be honest I haven't um, I haven't been reinstated um, I've just been baptised and left um, it would be interesting to hear for, um, see a video I might look for one obviously there must be some out there um, that talk about um, being reinstated and the process you have to go through um, to show, see, you know, whatever, you, to say you're repentant of your sins. That was more like a Church of England vicar, wasn't it? Do respect the, the... Oh man, don't get me started on my old vicar. Um, when we went to church before, like we went to church a year before um, studying and, um, well, <laughs> We went to Church of England for a year, and in that process, we started. Um, we had started studying with Joe's Witnesses, um, and when we came out of the church, it was like we had a fate on, and we went down there, helped him set it up, and all the old ladies in the area were like, oh, they an old fate on down at the church. And they all come down, and the poor old dears are standing out the front, and. The gate's locked and they're here early and I say to the woman who sort of runs the church, you know, you've got the vicar who don't do bugger all. He can't even read his own fucking Bible. Hold his own Bible. He doesn't even hold it. He has some, he has two pillocks, hold it for him. Anyway, just got a message out to get rid of. Um, and there's a woman in charge and, uh, she was 60 odd and she'd been going to that church uh, for since she was a little girl six I think she said I mean that's a long time to go to one church um, it's funny because I think a lot of the people at that church didn't actually believe in any of the teachings of the Bible but they just went because they liked the atmosphere and they liked the old building which I admit it, it was it what an amazing old building I mean Churches that are that old are are fantastic. Um, and when you get involved, you get to go behind closed doors you've never been behind before and see interesting things. And you think, you know, hundreds of years ago, someone actually built this, you know, put this there with their hands and built this church. It's just amazing. And the smell of the churches, you know, it's, 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 it's a nice atmosphere. Um, it was always bloody freezing. Um, I don't know what heating system they had, but I mean, for a big well, it was a little church, but it's a big space in it, it's high up, and that it was a fancy church. And uh, yeah, that's where me and Marie got married, that's where my mum and dad got married. They're divorced now, obviously, a long time ago, but that's where they got married. It's where my grandparents got married, and it's where my, as far as I know, my great grandparents got married there. Um, my granny and granddad Magnus um, granddad great granddad Magnus he had one eye um, never spoke much but when he did it meant something apparently I remember him just not speaking much at all when I was a kid I just remember he had the glasses on and just an eye that was sort of all the skin was uh, 
yeah. But we used to call them granny and granddad pegs, great granny pegs, because they had a bag of pegs and that's what we'd play with. We'd play with the old sort of dolly pegs, you know, and we'd play with them. And then you'd have this wooden pegs with springs on as well. We'd make little aeroplanes, make little bunkers with cannons on, and that was our little thing when we went around there. Um, when they got married in that church, and it was a, not a nice old church, but yeah, bloody freezing. But I remember going in that church, and there you had to walk in, and they had the holy water as you walked in on the left. And I'll tell you, it was really, I mean, holy means clean, doesn't it? I mean, this was clean. Not, it was like, it had scum on top of it. And my, I remember my granddad went in on on something, maybe it was a christening we had or something, and he went, oh, look, I stay out of water. <laughs> it had a fly in it. It did fly. It was proper scam, scabby. And um, and obviously because I wanted to get involved, because I believed in, I started believing in God and looking in the Bible and um, wanted to serve him. And that's how the witnesses got me, I think. Um, well, I didn't get the chance to serve when I moved congregations so much. But there you go, every congregation is different than the Jehovah's Witnesses. They're not united in faith. They all work differently. They all have different beliefs. You have a beard, you can't have a beard. You can you can buy a Christmas present. Oh, let's not go there. Some attire is appropriate and some isn't. Some have birthday cakes, some don't. United in faith. Anyway, yeah, and the holy water um, was kept in an old um, cooking oil um, bowl. Like you imagine the, uh, like the big, what are they four liters or something? No, big cooking oil ones that you get in like restaurants and stuff. Um, and uh, that's what the holy water was in, and it had uh, written on in permanent marker, uh, holy water. <laughs> So yeah, um, nice old church. I remember actually before I was actually in, I mean, I'd been to that church. I mean, I've got a video cassette somewhere of my mum and dad's wedding at that church, um, which I need to get put onto DVD before it gets destroyed. It's got my cousin on it who died and people have died since I've grown up and it's got, they're all on there. I'd love to see it. Um, better get on that actually. I remember my granddad picked me up one day from school and we were walking down the alleyway down the back of the old, old down the back of the church and uh, a voice came out from a little hole a little drain hole and there was obviously someone down there working or something but it stuck in my memory little things like that when you're a kid and you're walking past someone says hello and we said hello and, oh, you know they stick in your head doing things funny little things like that I remember I was um I went to Octavia Hill's birthplace in um, in Wisbeach, and uh, we were down in the cellar bit a bit. And um, if you don't know about Octavia Hill, look her up um, and look up Wisbeach, um, W I S B E C H, Wisbeach. Um, the amount of people who have come from that place is unreal the effect they've had on uh, world history the people that came from Wisbeach and the effect they had on world history is is shocking because I mean Wisbeach is known as a bit of a dive um, generally um, but I uh, yeah I don't I don't go there very often at all um, but anyway I was in Octavia Hill's uh, birthplace thing down in the uh, cellars and up top, I mean you're talking Victorian times and if the building was before there, before, was there before then I don't know but anyway we went there and there was a, you're underground but you can, there's a window and you can see the pavement, you can see people walking by. And that was funny because I was like, help, out the window and made this bloke jump. That's funny. Also in, in the Wiz Beach, there is a uh, an old castle. And the ground's there from like 1600s. But the castle's been knocked down and rebuilt somewhere else. And then they 
they built a house and then they knocked the house down and they mowed it and built another house and that house is really old and we've been in that and we went down. We went underneath that castle in the um, in the tunnels that are under Whiz Beach Town. And it is awesome. Apparently they used to keep people down there um, the 1600s and before, way before that. I mean this place is old. But there was, you could go down the bottom and you could see these bits carved out of the rock. And apparently the monks used to put their crosses on there. And the monks would do their chants down in this, in this place. I mean, it's unreal. This place is awesome. And it's, they've got some a rare breed of bat down there that protected. And um, it's very dark. Obviously you need torches, no light down there. Um, but he was saying, you know, some of the stones there, the bricks were made by hand, obviously, back then. And... Um, on the on the brick parts of it anyway and uh you could see the fingerprints where people he said if the you know somebody to do it, but he did explain why they'd need to use their fingers to fix part of the brick or whatever it was but there's a reason it's probably to push it into the mold or something but you could see the fingerprints and you're thinking these are hundreds of years old these fingerprints it's an amazing experience i love things like that you know i mean we we're not far from Norfolk and you've got Castle Rising. I mean, I've been to loads of castles. I've been to lots and lots of castles all over the place. But I do like Castle Rising. I mean, so, so many castles, I don't even know what they're called. Um, I rely on my dad's memory to remember where we went when we were kids growing up and teenagers. I, I mean, back then when I was a teenager, it was interesting, but I never took in, as in, in the information like I do, like you do now. You know, you take things in. Um... Instead of just looking and going, wow, that's cool, that's old. I mean, so yeah, church. And then we were at church and then we went to Jehovah's Witnesses and we got baptised and blah de blah de blah And to go back into Jehovah's Witnesses, I mean, I think, I mean, we've done Halloween the witnesses know that we've done this Christmas thing and it's been on Facebook and every witness in the area knows that Marie's been primarily involved in it. So it's like, what do we do? I mean, I would never do it because I've got kids and I've got a life to get on with. But um, I think if we didn't have kids, I'd probably just for a laugh, just go in, um, try and get reinstated just for a laugh and just mess, mess with them. Because it's something to do in it. I mean, it's interesting. It's quite interesting stuff to do. Um, I mean, uh, in my last video, I think I talked about watching SAS, Who Dares Wins. And it's funny because they put them through the um, interrogation uh, training thing. And obviously not as bad as what they really do. Because, like I said in the other video, that we know they do waterlogging and stuff like that. And the SAS is stuff that goes on they can't release because other countries would know how they train and other countries would be have special forces as be, as good as the special air services anyway uh, the psychological side of it was is quite interesting and a lot of the psychological stuff in that program you know you can relate to when you've been xjw um i mean there they have this camaraderie and they have a they trust each other and each of them stick up for each other you know, protect each other, uh, put their lives at, um, before the others, and that's how they all look after each other. A bit like when you see the 300 film Spartan, and he says, you know, you, you look after him, he looks after you, you look after, you know, and that's how they survive so long. Um, won these battles. And it's very good to, you know, it's a good way of doing it. Um, but the camaraderie, the, the, the friends you make uh, as a Jehovah's Witness, some can seem to be like that, but it's all false in the end. It's completely rubbish. It's like uh, you feel like you've got this great friendship, like an intricate uh, card house that you built, you know. But I say card because you can just, it only takes someone to close a door and get a slight draft and the whole thing falls down. Um, like I say, one of my closest friends, Joe's Witness, stopped talking to me because I carved a vegetable. Um, it sounds funny, really. I mean, it is funny, isn't it, really? Um, some of them stop talking to you just because they do. And I've been thinking a lot about the uh, 
the elder who told me, who when I was talking to him about my children and protecting them from being gawped at by a paedophile, and I weren't happy about it, and he just started going about a lot, sacrificing his daughters to the angels. Whether I took it the wrong way or what, I don't know, but that just wasn't the right scripture to bring up in that situation. Um, you talk to a father, protecting about his children, and you start going about a man. No, no, don't do it, mate. And, you know, and, and actually, um, whether he's wicked and knows what he's doing or not, I don't know. But if he's a, a, a good a good brainwashed man, do you know what I mean? I mean, he's not a good man because of what he's doing, obviously. But if you see what I'm saying, he's not as sinister as, he might not be as sinister as what some have said the elders are. Um, it could be that he really does think that, the, that that his Jehovah God is more important, and and that's it, really, isn't it? They're brainwashed to believe that their their God is is the the everything, and um, and that I should have basically just put up with that crap because. That's it, and leave it up to the, his God to sort out. But the point is, it, it's gone on for probably longer than a year dealing with this bloke. It just got worse and worse. We weren't happy with it for a long time. Um, it went downhill as soon as he moved into the congregation, really. Um, we had another family who actually left, uh, an elder and his family left the congregation, and the wife said it was because of him. She was taking pictures of the uh, paedophile. Um, take with his hands or on his uh, son's head. I mean, she didn't really keep her children away from him. They just ran around the, ran around the hall. But the guy was putting his hands on the kids' heads when they walked by and things like that. And she was taking pictures of him. Um, so she had a problem with the paedophile. But they just moved out, moved congregations. Um, Something happened um, that made them abrupt, ab abruptly leave our congregation all of a sudden. I don't know what that reason was, to be honest. But um, maybe I think it, I think it might have been the fact that a child was told off uh, for, for nearly pulling down a kettle. He was climbing under the chairs and pulled the nearly pulled the wire, nearly pulled the whole kettle down. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. Of course, it wasn't the child's fault. It was the person's fault for plugging the kettle in. Right. Um, yeah, but I mean, psychologically, I mean, I think I could. I think I would have been able to do. You know, yeah, but this is the thing. You see, um, I have got a family, and that's the way I feel. If I went there now, I'm just angry at them. And yeah, I mean, but if I if I'd have if I was a single bloke. Or it was just me and a partner and we left um we left and then we didn't have kids. Um I might give it a go at getting back in there and just messing things up a bit, you know, messing up the meetings or moving things around, just having a bit of a bit of a laugh, a bit of a fun. Maybe try and turn a few people against each other uh, the elders specifically drop in some gossiping and just rip them apart um, but to be honest thinking about that making that causing that sort of devastation and doing that and I say devastation it's already what was happening <laughs> they're just all brainwashed um, the gossiping I mean the elders think they're all alright but I mean I was close to different elders and they'd all open up and tell me things that really they shouldn't tell me and um, one of them said he feels like you know another elder comes in and he takes charge and he's demoted and not given the chance to do you know so many talks or he's get, get, he was moaning because he was always given the crap jobs you know but it's it's funny, you know. Um, I see it in all in different as aspects aspects of life, different sectors or what, different 
things. And um, there's always someone willing to say that's a good idea and try and get the uh, the praise for something. You know, something good happens. They'll say, oh, I was involved in that when really they didn't really do much. Or they'll say, oh, yeah, that's a good idea, blah, blah, blah. And then when you say, well, if you can do that for me, then they'll go, oh, actually, um, I can't. Um, I'm washing my hair. And it's just like all mouth. Words, words, words. We had an elder come in from a different country. And he, he'd said that the elders in that country just get respect as soon as they become an elder. Whereas here in the, in England, well, as, as I see it, you earn respect. Um, but I remember him um, getting a cleaning job. Um, Marie was showing him the cleaning. And the wife was okay and stuff, but the bloke was like, he lied. He said, oh, yeah, I've done that real. Marie said, oh, did you wipe the table? He said, yeah. When she went in there, she said it clearly wasn't because there was crumbs and milk on the table. He hadn't wiped the table, so this elder had lied. But he wanted to lift there. Instead of walking, he wanted to lift there. And um, he looked at our car, which was a six, which was a seven-seater, but one of the seats was down because otherwise he's got no boot space in his Zafira. And then he, um, and he was like, "Oh, you got seven-seater? You got you've got room? You've got room? You know?" But obviously, in his his country, you can just you, they they can just pile them all in into the car with no seat belts. Um, but here we can't do that. And I weren't going to put a seat up just to take him or just his wife because. Like I said, I mean, when my car's full of stuff, I'm, I'm not just going to leave it by the side of the road, you know. It doesn't make sense. I went that far to walk anyway, lazy. I think he was a lazy bloke. But he was given uh, jobs to do in the, con in the congregation and he didn't want to do them. And, um, yeah, he was a bit of a dick. Uh, it's funny because he was a bit of a dick to um, Mark, the bloke who said he was going to have to, who, who, who stop being my friend because I carved a vegetable. He, um, they did. Them two didn't get on. Um, it's funny because my mate who left didn't stop talking to me. Well, he he was he obviously wasn't. I don't know who you know. I mean, as I said in the other video, he bought me a car. Um, and that's one of the things I thought. Do you know what? No one in the world. No one in the in the world. Would buy someone a car. That was weird. I wonder if we've got mice. I know there's a lot of mice around here, but um, they, since we bought the cat, we had mice in the loft, but um, in the downstairs loft. But um, I know that since we got the cat, that stopped that he bring he was bringing cat like uh, some nights free free mice a night. Uh, the, the cats are he's called Ina as I've said in the other thing. Lone warrior killer. Um, he's a little sod. He kills all the mice for us. Anyway, I thought you know this brother has brought us a car. Um, no one in the world would do that. And then obviously I'm on Facebook and I'm like, hey XJWs they they made some friends and they brought them a car. So there's people who are not, you know you just find that you know you can say this though i can say that you know there's there's witnesses who are knobs and there's people in the world who are knobs it's sort of the same but there's not the brainwashing and the deceit there is in jehovah's witnesses so much i think um but it was funny as my friend could see that the elders were wrong and he hated it that much 
that he dropped everything and asked for his paperwork to back and to be destroyed. And now he's like in limbo and not in a congregation. And you can see all that and his stuff he's been through in his past. And uh, the child abuse that happened to his children and stuff. And he's still in it. He's just so far. He's so entrenched. And he'll never come out of that. But I'm glad I am. So, uh, yeah. See you later, people. I'm going to get going. I'm going to get a bollock him. Ciao.